So we talked about fasted cardio. That's another myth. It doesn't work because cardio doesn't really work that great for fat loss anyway. So strength training. This is another one. A lot of people tell me, how does strength training help you with fat loss? Is it true or false? Do you really believe that? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You sure it's true? Well, you just You're building muscle. muscle in our muscles. Right? Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see if you change your answer. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's a couple of studies about that. American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, effects of strength training or aerobic training on the effect of body composition, body composition resting metabolic rate in obese diabetes subjects. Weight training, lost more body fat, lost more weight, gained muscle than the aerobic group. Exercise intensity. Now, here's where it gets, there's, this is where we're going to really get into it now as far as exercise. Exercise intensity. Does the type of training or intensity matter? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Pretty much answered that for you already, right? Here's mm -hmm. a study regarding long-term adaptations to metabolism. This is from UC Berkeley, 2006. Researchers discovered that men and women who logged the same weekly mileage year after year, regardless of the amount to gain weight. This is talking about uh, endurance running program, okay? Even with mileages that up to 40 miles a week, they gained weight. That's scary, huh? Probably had a great cardiovascular system, though. So metabolism slows with age. Running did not help offset this. Running didn't help increase your metabolism. After all, that's really what we're looking for in fat loss. Calories burned during exercise, yeah, that's a good thing, but what we want to see is how many calories we burn after the exercise. Aerobics don't help you there. That study just proves it, okay? Efficiency in, in, in the exercise, so your body starts uh, exercising more efficiently, so you're gonna burn less calories with the same amount of work over time. Uh, Here's a good one. To avoid the weight gain, this is what the researchers figured out. Men would have to increase their mileage 1.7 miles per week or 88 per year to offset that. <laughs> That's, a lot. That's as we get older. Okay? And women had to increase it by 2.4 a week or 125 miles a year. Just, just doing endurance training. Just just <laughs> so every year they would have to increase yes. it? Yeah. yeah. This is from Berkeley, 2006. It's already more than a year. We better start running. Huh? Right. Now, here's one of my favorite studies. And this is really going to tell you what type of exercise I'm talking about and what we should uh, be including. One, it's a study by Tremblay in 1994. 20 weeks of steady state endurance training versus 15 weeks of intervals. Here's the bad part about intervals. They flat out suck to do. They're not fun, they're hard. And intensity is the key. If you're not gonna bring it, don't even bother, okay? You have gotta get the intensity. And you have to come right. All right, so in the 20 weeks, the endurance people burnt 28,661 calories. Pretty good, huh? Versus 15 weeks of intervals that burnt 13,614 calories. Now, if you do the math, that's less than half. Who, who lost more fat? Despite the lower energy expenditure, the interval training group lost nine times more subcutaneous body fat. Half the time, or well, half the calories, five weeks less, and they got more bang for their buck. Were you the trainer? What's that? <laughs> Were you the trainer? Medical <laughs> trainer? I'm teasing. I can show you how to do it. <laughs> okay. So des despite the energy burned during the session, that was that's what I was trying to point out. Despite whatever calories you burnt during that session. It doesn't matter, really. It's 
raising that metabolism over the long haul. And that's, that clearly illustrates that point. Okay? 